Production funding for Facing the Mortgage Crisis, a Houston PBS Town Hall meeting, was provided in part through a grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Houston PBS, in partnership with United Way of Greater Houston, Houston Community Newspapers, and the Houston Foreclosure Prevention Task Force, presents Facing the Mortgage Crisis, a Houston PBS Town Hall meeting. Today, more and more area families are losing their homes because they can't afford larger mortgage payments. In Texas, there has been a steady rise in foreclosures since December of 2008, with Harris County leading the state with over 22,000 foreclosure filings. Many could have saved their homes, but they did not ask for help, even though it is free. Tonight, you'll hear from experts with local nonprofit organizations who are dedicated to helping preserve one of the most important investments you will ever make. I'm Patricia Gross, and I'll be hosting tonight's program. For the next hour, we'll discuss a number of issues related to the mortgage crisis. You'll learn the steps you can take if you are behind on your mortgage or fear you will be soon. Our studio audience includes concerned citizens from across the Houston region. We'll also be talking, taking phone calls. The number to call is one 866 583-8814. The phone lines are being staffed by members of the Houston Foreclosure Prevention Task Force, a group of lenders, nonprofits, and housing counselors who can answer your questions during the show, and they will remain available for a half hour after the program. So let's begin with our first story. Merlina Wells began her campaign to save her home after she was unable to pay for her mortgage for two months. Let's go. How an out, out. Merlina Wells can now enjoy the house she almost Crazy. lost. This way. Come on. She lives in Missouri Come City, on. an area highly yeah. affected by the mortgage crisis. She recruits nurses from all over the world. A nurse herself, she is also oh. an entrepreneur. Come here, Rexy. But Come two on, years ago, Rexy. she got divorced, on, and her okay. business venture did not materialize. Simba, come here. Come here. In just come a few months, she wasn't able to pay her house come loan here. and was at risk on, of champion. losing it. Then she come became here. proactive. And I called the bank, and again, they were not very receptive about helping me. So I kind of almost just like told them that, go ahead, you can have my, my house. I really don't want to give it up because I've worked so hard for it, but you're not helping me. She then kept receiving phone calls or seeing street signs of companies promising to help homeowners save their home for a fee. And I tried to call some people that were calling me, that I can pay $5,000 and they will help me save my house. But they were all out of town. They were from Florida. They were from New York. They were just calling me everywhere that they can help me save the home. But I didn't trust them. I said, the first place, I didn't have $5,000. Otherwise, I could pay for my house. Once she got a new job, she felt more hope. But it still wasn't enough. I called back the bank. I said, so now where am I going my interest rate is so high and my payment is so high and my income is, is lower than my payment. So is there something that I need to do? And they said, no, you cannot, uh, re you cannot refinance. You don't qualify for refinancing because you were behind, you know, for six months. But Wells never gave up and kept asking questions. And one day she heard something in the news. And there was something about makingyourhomeaffordable.com. And they said, you want to save your home? And you know, Obama plan does this, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I wonder what that is. So I wrote it down. The government website, HUD.gov, walks you through what needs to be done to save your home if you're eligible. Then she also found out the government, not her bank, who was servicing the loan, actually owned her loan, which made things easier to negotiate a loan modification. A letter from my bank said there is a seminar that we're holding and it is going to be in this place, and it is for those people who want to save their home. So she went to one of the many free seminars hosted by the Houston Area Foreclosure Prevention Task Force members. I got to understand then that, yes, I'm one of those millions of Americans that can be saved, that can be helped with my mortgage, because I qualified. Refinance is still refinance, okay? The most surprising to me is the fact that this is something really for a lot of Americans that they can be helped. And how come there's only very few people that are here? While she was doing everything she could to save her home, 
she also realized just how many people she knew were facing the same foreclosure problems. They're all professionals, just like me, nurses, you know, uh, business people, and they just, like, they own a home, but they did not, you know, they didn't know where, what to do. And it, it's just very easy for, for us to answer because we're flooded with calls and we're flooded with Internet um, emails about, I can save your home. At the seminar, she had learned you should not have to pay to get information and help if you qualify, but you have to attend or check the website, makinghomeaffordable.gov, to get appropriate information. My problem is we are too professionals and we're too proud a lot of times. And when we get into things like this, it's almost like my daughter said, you're taping? You're taping, Mommy? You're, they are coming here to tape to tell that you are not able to pay your house. <laughs> <laughs> I said, so <laughs> if that would help people, that's fine. I'll put my face into it. Joining us in the studio tonight, Sherry Young is the executive director of the Credit Coalition, a HUD, that's Housing and Urban Development, approved housing counseling agency. Gabriela Hernandez is the lead housing counselor with the Tejano Center, a HUD approved counseling agency. And Stephen Marshall is the housing coordinator for the Gulf Coast Community Services Association. And attorney Rob Harlow is the attorney, is an attorney with the Houston Bar Association's Consumer Task Force. All provide free counseling services to help people facing foreclosure. Thank you all for joining us. Now, one of the things we notice is that a lot of people are very fearful and, sh and they feel a lot of shame about uh, their mortgage problems. But let's start with what are the first steps they should take. They say they're watching the show right now. What is the first step? First step is, if you've received any mail from your lender, your servicer, or the person you're making your payment to, open that mail and read it. Number two, if you think you're behind or you may be behind, pick up the phone and call that lender, service, or the company you're making your payment to. Communication is the key. Then right. reach out to HUD.gov and look for a housing counselor in your community. And, of course, we have the task force here, the Houston Foreclosure Prevention Task Force. We're all... HUD approved housing counseling agencies, and we're here to assist for free. Great. Now, um, I'd like to also, I know there are a lot of tenants that are concerned about, well, what if my owner uh, gets foreclosed on? And you're the lawyer, so I'm going to ask you that question about renters' rights, because they've changed. Yes. Uh, in the past, foreclosure would have basically cut off the lease. Tenants would have been evicted out of luck. Uh, in the last, uh, in, back in May, they passed uh, bankruptcy, uh, keeping, Saving Families for Bankruptcy Act. One of the lesser known provisions is in the back of the act was added at the very last minute. Mm -hmm. Basically gives the rights of tenants in a residential or dwelling, whatever that means, uh, the ability to stay in their, their house mm -hmm. for the term of their lease. Okay. If they're on a month to month, which a lot of people are, they at least get a minute, a 90 day notice. And there's some, there's, some, there's some ins and outs that you need you know, more details, but, some time to but, that, but that's, the big, that's the big picture there. And Gabriela Hernandez, she talked about the lenders and trying to talk to them. How do, how do you negotiate with a lender and how do you handle their phone calls or their emails? By all means, you should answer the phone calls when right. the lender is trying to contact you. Always keep the lines of communication open. And be honest. That's the most important thing. Be honest about your income. Be honest about your budget. Don't try to say what you think the lender might want to hear. Right. Honesty is the best policy. Best policy. Mm -hmm. um, we heard in the story about the Obama plan, uh, and that's, that's pretty recent. And I, I know they're still working it through. It's still some people are even learning it. But tell us about the Obama plan. Where can we read about it? I understand this making home affordable program. Well, uh, who's eligible? well, basically, to be eligible, you have to. It's, it's generally a FHA. It's not a FHA loan. Mm -hmm. It's a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac product. Uh, basically, there's two type of of uh, programs in there. There's one for refinancing. The acronym is HARP, mm -hmm. uh, How Homes of Affordable Refinancing Program, and that program allows people to refinance even though the house may not be worth the same amount as they they originally uh, got a loan for. And the second one, which is more f uh, f to prevent foreclosure, is the uh, Home Affordable Mod Program, which mod modification program, which allows individuals to actually change the rate or the terms of a, of a loan so as they make it more affordable so that a person can stay there uh, longer. 
The, the Texas foreclosure process is different um, than the rest of the, of the country. What is the Texas foreclosure process? Well, basically, the first thing is the sale date is the first Tuesday of every month. Beyond that, there's two notice periods. You have your default notice period and you your what I call the foreclosure notice period. Default notice uh, in Texas, it requires 20 days. Uh, some federal loans like Fannie Mae's and I think Freddie Mac's and stuff require 30 days. And then after that time period expired, they give you notice of your default. That time period expires, then they can post for foreclosure. Okay. In Texas, it has to be at least 21 days. So, like, you know, for um, September foreclosure, you have to post by, you know, next Tuesday or so mm -hmm. to meet that 21-day deadline. But you need to be aware that the loan documents often have different uh, time frames, so you really need to review your loan documents because right. those, those trump everything. But a lot of times now, they're, they just defer to whatever the local jurisdiction's law is, which in Texas is the 2021 or 3021. That's where period. housing counselors come in handy. Yes. And we have a, an email question. Uh, Maria writes, I purchased a home two years ago and have rented to my daughter and son-in-law. And recently, last two months, they had trouble paying the mortgage of $1,600. They're sending what they can but are still running behind. Bank of America said that I'm up for a foreclosure review in August. And my main question is this. I live in my main home, which is paid in full. Can Bank of America come after my home that I have worked so hard to pay for and keep it by putting a lien on it if I go into foreclosure? Does anybody want to answer that question? I'll, I'll try it first. Okay. Uh, I think the answer and is no because the lien is on the house that the person is actually uh, occupying, okay. not the not the house that she's uh, living she in. Uh -huh. Right. So therefore, yes, they could foreclose on that particular property, and I guess for tax purposes that there's a possibility they go back for the difference of whatever the house sold for. But other than that, they couldn't go back to her house mm -hmm. where she lived in. Okay. It really comes down to whatever the mortgage document the deed of trust has on. So it is on the rental property. That's all they can get. If she inadvertently, a lot of people put liens on their houses and they don't even know it. They just, right. you know, right. the, you know for, or in a mo pro modification process, the bank will, you know, here, just put this uh, additional collateral on. That's when you That's really when need to go back really and read those, read those loan documents, read that mortgage document. Go to our see. website and, and check our counseling. And, and also, Patty, um, she might want to contact Bank of America. Mm -hmm. And even though it's not her primary residence in question, she can uh, try to work something out on her uh, uh, house that she's renting to her relatives. So and, check with her. And the whole key is the ability to pay. If whoever's in that house or if she has the ability to pay, that's where the communication comes in with Bank of America. Again, if she doesn't talk to them, she's not going to get you an answer, yes yeah. or no. You need to ask. You need to ask. Uh, we have a, a phone call uh, question. Uh, Don, what is your question, please? John, I'm sorry, John. John? This is John. Yes, John. What is your question? Yes, I was uh, reading about reverse mortgages. Real good. I was just going to ask I was wondering that. if I should get one on my home. I've got a small refinance right now, but I'm over 62. Does the, do the panelists think that's a good idea? Uh, well, thank you, John. Can, uh, you want to answer <laughs> that? Um, you know, one thing that if you're interested in a reverse mortgage, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to contact a HUD approved housing counseling agency that has a reverse mortgage counselor on staff. There, you'll go to them, um, they'll counsel you, they'll cover the good, the bad, the pretty and the ugly about reverse mortgages, share with you other alternatives that may be available to you in your community, and help you um, with information so that you can make an informed choice. Mm -hmm. Now, the reverse mortgage is a beautiful thing for some people, and it's not pretty for others, and that's going to be up to you and your family to decide. But it's it's an option, and if you're at least 62 years of age, it's an excellent option, and Empower yourself. Great. Now, uh, I want to know about federal laws protecting homeowners today. Do, uh, how are they, have they changed, and what do people need to know about the law? Well, there's, there's the old acts of RESPA. I don't know exactly what the acronym stands That's for, okay. but they everybody calls it RESPA today, and it's been around <laughs> for 20 years. And then Truth and Lending Act. Truth and, the Truth Lending, and Lending is Act. the biggest one. Mm -hmm. um, there are a number of modifications uh, flowing through Washington right now, but nothing's really been, nothing substantial. They always tweak it here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, they, a lot of them have been stuck in committee due to health care negotiations and their focus on that. Basically, that, that's, the, that's the biggest hammer, and that's where you really need to get, if you have, think you have a Truth and Lending Act, or talk to a counselor and find out what, it, what it Truth and Lending Act really means because it's a volume of law 
that you know you could have an entire seminar week-long seminar on it and not cover everything mm -hmm. but it basically gives you some rights to go back to the lender and say hey you didn't do this right and, right, and right. basically you give you material to modify and possibly even get out of some some of the bad mortgages but so it's, really you, need you really to need to get to, to a counselor find out if you even have a claim and that counselor can then refer you to some legal clinics and things of that nature that may be helpful. Again, they can go to the website or, or call our number right now. Gabriela, what happens after foreclosure? What's the timeline? Well, after a home has been foreclosed, the best, time, the best thing to do would be to start packing your things uh, and plan on moving. Um, unfortunately, Texas does not have the right of redemption. Even if the homeowner comes up uh, with the amount of money that they were delinquent with, plus the cost of, that the lender had to to go through to go through the foreclosure, they're, they're not going to be able to get their home back. Mm -hmm. So the best thing to do is to pack their things and plan to go and rent somewhere else. They can also ask for the program on Cash for Keys. Okay. Uh, if they take care of the property, can they get some cash to move on? Good, good. And we have another email uh, question. Sammy writes, I have been told modifications on mortgages would not be made unless payments are behind. I would like to know if this is true. If not, how do you qualify to modify your loan if you're having difficulty making payments now, although they're current? Okay. Uh, Get ready. For, mo <laughs> <laughs> for the modification uh, uh, program uh, under President Obama's uh, administration plan is you do not have to be behind in payments. What you have to sh be is that um, either you had had to show that there's an intimate danger of you becoming behind. Um, they try to work with you and when we talk about modification you're just actually changing the loan uh, itself and the purpose behind that is for stability and longevity into the house itself. Mm -hmm. So the modification can change the rates, the times, just that's basically what it's for, just changing the, the, the loan itself. And as far as the hardship, you have to have a hardship, or you know that a hardship is coming. And so, you, you, again, that has to be verifiable. You've lost a job, you've lost some income, possibly. You have an illness in the family, you're taking on new household mm -hmm. members. There are a variety of, of hardship reasons. But again, it must be a verifiable hardship. We have a phone call from Aquanet. I hope I'm saying that right. Aquanet, what is your question? My question is, I wanted to know, I wanted to know, I have gotten behind on my uh, mortgage, and um, I wanted to find out, I wanted to find out, I had gotten behind on my mortgage, and I was trying to find out if my income is lower than my mortgage, how can I get it um, current, and I've tried to work with my mortgage uh, um, company, but they're not really working with me. Okay. What, what, um, who wants to help her? Well, I would say reach out to one of the housing counseling agencies, and you can go on to the PBS to this website um, and get a list of the local housing counseling agencies here in Houston. Um, also call the 211 helpline, and they can refer you to a housing counseling agency in your community. Thank you very much.